With the Biden regime's incompetence clogging supply lines, now's the time to check out this offer from preparewithdronetech.com. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. You write, there are tens of millions of Americans who aren't on the hard left or the hard right who feel the world has gone mad. So in what ways has the world gone mad? <laughs> Well, you know, when you have the chief reporter on the beat of COVID for the New York Times talking about how questioning or pursuing the question of the lab leak is racist, the world has gone mad. When you're not able to say out loud and in public that there are differences between men and women, the world has gone mad. When we're not allowed to acknowledge that rioting is rioting and it is bad, and that silence is not violence, but violence is violence, the world has gone mad. I think he's talking to you. When we're not able to say that Hunter Biden's laptop is a story worth pursuing, the world has gone mad. When in the name of progress, young school children, as young as kindergarten, are being separated in public schools because of their race, and that is called progress rather than segregation, the world has gone mad. What is it that Brian Stelter claims to do for a living? Scrutinizing the media? Oh, well, he scrutinizes his business and political competition over at Fox News and other right-leaning media, but never the Democrat state media. You say we're not allowed, we're not able. Between. Who's the people stopping the conversation? Who are they? <laughs> as long as she doesn't say I'm the problem, then we're home free. <laughs> um, people that work at networks, <laughs> frankly, like the one I'm speaking on right now, who try and claim that... You know, it was it was racist to investigate the lab leak theory. It was. But I mean, who let's said just that take an CNN. Who, I mean, who let's said just that at CNN? Whoa, 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 Brian, slow down, buddy. I have a feeling that you know you stepped in it the second that stupid thought left your lips. Of course, CNN has called it racist. Now, to be fair, I haven't found any examples of someone on CNN outright saying that the lab leak theory is racist. I have found this one story so far that implies it's racist and inciting attacks. Not to mention, CNN and the rest of the media spent a lot of time claiming that the name China virus or Wuhan virus was racist. Calling it the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus or the Kung flu. Listen, you may think it's clever, uh, but it's hurting. Do better. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? That he couldn't help himself. He had to call it a foreign virus. That is so wrong. It is such an irrational, unscientific, nonsensical way to talk about this. He called it a foreign virus. Well, the fact is, it's here in America. Even though there are now more reported cases outside of mainland China, than inside. Obviously, viruses don't have a nationality. The World Health Organization has really pushed back on this, saying that that is absolutely not the appropriate description. If you want to blame, blame Earth. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I mean, it's a, because it could have come from anywhere. All right? That, of mm. course, people think of as a racist term. His racist attack on the Chinese virus. You just wonder what's wrong with him. A lot of people, Yamish, think he's just blatantly racist. Fierce criticism that the term is racist. Racist. Xenophobic. Yeah, it is racist, Donald Trump, so stop using it. We know what that's about. That's about him playing xenophobia. It works with his race. This is race baiting. This is a form of xenophobia. Many Asian Americans say it is racist. <laughs> don't think these two things are unrelated. So yeah, CNN took part in this propaganda to stifle investigations into China. But I just think it's a provocative thing you say. You say, you say we're not allowed to talk about these things, but they're all over the internet. Well, I can Google them. I can Brian, find them everywhere. I've heard about every story you oh, mentioned. Of course. So I'm just suggesting, of course, people are allowed to cover whatever they want to cover. Right. Uh, this guy is just such a dishonest slob. 
He must get paid well to debase himself like this in front of a shrinking amount of airport lobbies across this country. First of all, he mocks this idea that we're not allowed to say certain things or talk about certain stories. Her point, obviously, in this case is that folks like us risk losing our platform and being banned for talking about the wrong stories. Or even being critical of news about COVID, Democrats, Hunter Biden, or even Joe Biden. Brian even gives it away himself at one point, saying, quote, that these stories are all over the internet. Yeah, they're on the internet, on websites that are being deranked and hidden by Google. Because our media, the so-called free press or fourth estate, has abandoned their duties in favor of being propagandists for the party. And the irony of Stelter saying that these stories are all over the internet so you can easily find them. When his entire job is to build support for mass censorship of these places where you might find these news stories that are being suppressed. Then lastly, he essentially negates the previous excuses that he had been giving up to this point and says that the media can cover whatever story they want to cover. You and I both know, and it would be delusional to claim otherwise, that touching your finger to an increasing number of subjects that have been deemed third rail by the mm. mainstream institutions and increasingly by some of the tech companies will lead to reputational damage, perhaps you losing your job, um, your children sometimes being demonized as well. And so what happens is a kind of mm. internal self-censorship. This mm. is something that I saw. But wait, what the hell was that noise? This mm. is something that I saw. Is that a whale? This mm. is something that I saw. Did somebody just give Brian a plate of donuts? This mm. is something that I saw over and over again when I was at the New York Times. People saying to themselves, you know what? Why should I die on that hill? Why should I take the three or four weeks that it takes to smuggle through an op-ed that doesn't suit the conventional narrative? I might as huh. well commission the 5,000th op-ed saying that Donald Trump is a moral monster. What's going on is the transformation of these sense-making institutions of American life. All right, I apologize, but I don't have the rest of that interview. He essentially just deflects and changes the subject because he has no defense for what is in our faces on a daily basis. Now, on a side note, if you happen to be a customer of Northwestern Mutual, Mutual, you might want to consider taking your business elsewhere because they sponsored this segment and many other tater segments. Why spend your money on a company that hates you? That's all I have for this one, folks. If you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Don't forget to share and subscribe and leave me a comment to let me know what you think.